you know, what, what, what were some of the things like, what did you have to deal with being somebody with your background? Arizona has um, a pretty strict set of rules when it comes to race. And the rule is essentially, when you get into county jail, you decide who you're going to roll with. If you're white and you've got blonde hair and blue eyes and you want to roll with the blacks, technically you can. I've actually seen it happen mm. once. Um, but once you make that decision, that's a decision that you're stuck with you're, for your whole sentence, whether it's a month, whether it's a decade, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. <laughs> What's up everybody, Big Kirk 916 and you're getting down with another edition of Fresh Out Prison Talk. I have here with me the homie Mike from Arizona and um, this man has an interesting story and he wants to share some insight about some of the things he experienced while in prison in Arizona. So Mike, um, a lot of people just by looking at you would know that you're, you're uh, you're mixed, man. You know, people think you're Hispanic, or they wouldn't think maybe you're white, yep. but you're actually you know, your, your mom's white, your dad's black. Yep. And so a lot of people ask us, like, if they go into prison, um, who would they roll with, and how would they conduct themselves? Because we know prisons are very racial. Yeah. You know, what 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 were some of the things like? What did you have to deal with being somebody with your background? So Arizona has. Um a pretty strict set of rules when it comes to race. And the rule is essentially, when you get into county jail, you decide who you're going to roll with. If you're white and you've got blonde hair and blue eyes and you wanna roll with the blacks, technically you can. I've actually seen it happen mm. once. Um, but once you make that decision, that's a decision that you're stuck with you're, for your whole sentence, whether it's a month, whether it's a decade, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. So. Um, when I went into county jail, I had already heard a little bit about, I already knew what the inside was like. The, the race structure between whites and blacks, very different. I ran with the blacks from day one to day seven years later. So prior to going to prison, were the majority of the people that you ran with on the street, were they black? No, the majority of the people I knew on the streets were Mexican. Oh, yep. okay, yeah. okay. So, uh, we're in Arizona. There's a lot of Mexicans out here. It's we're, we used to go into Mexico every weekend before I went into prison, and, and you know I grew up around a lot of Mexicans. But um, my I'm black. That's what, at the end of the day that I'm black. Yeah. So it's you know what I mean. Whether I got <laughs> the hair, the face, I don't, I'm black. Yeah, because I know, uh, and that's the thing. Like you know, especially in California State, it's very based on racial, and then the feds is it's, it's racial, but it's more. Um, on what financial level you were at to a degree because dudes who are, are, are white or black or Hispanic, you know, kind of mix in regards to educating each other on different things. Um, did any of your like prior like history as far as how you carried it on the street uh, follow you inside as far as like, you know, your reputation? Because a lot of people, you know, they do background checks to see yeah. you know, who, if you say who you were on the street, you know, what your credentials are, things of that nature. Did you deal with a lot of that going in? Yeah, um, everybody does, I think, their first year or so. Um, in county jail, you go, uh, county jail is the hardest part here in Arizona. County is horrible. You're inside, there's no sunlight, everybody's stressed out. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows how much time they're getting. People are looking at 20 years, some people are looking at two years. So it's a very tense place. And um, yeah, everybody, for the most part, within a couple of days, you know, it's everybody knows who you are. Everybody knows what you're in here for, you know. There's... Um, once again, the same set of rules uh, apply for the most part through all races. You can't be in uh, jail or prison for certain types of crimes, anything against women, um, anything against children. We have a, a, you know, some rules that other states probably don't have, like drive-by shootings. Mm. Um, well, some of the races here in Arizona, um, if you have a drive-by shooting back in the day when I went in, in 2008 and 2009, you were considered no good mm. if you had, just for doing drive-bys. So that was a, a whole offense in itself. Obviously the same types of things though, like rape or, or, or anything against children, abusing children, child abuse, you know, anything like that, you're no good. You're immediately, if they ever found their way into GP, it's not gonna be pretty, pretty much. If you're fed up with paying cable companies and streaming apps too much money every month, then Vault TV is the solution you've been waiting for. 
Watch up to 100,000 movies on demand, up to 5,000 TV shows with over 120,000 episodes. Visit us at vaulttv.com. And um, being being a, um, who you are as far as uh, you know, multiracial, going in, going inside, doing your time, you, you seem pretty articulate in the fact that you kind of carried yourself different. Did you have a lot of people uh, trying to like, you know, question your integrity or, or try you in a sense of, you know, who do you think you are? Or, you know, your, your, your persona, did you have, did you deal with anything like that? Like guys who were kind of, you know, somewhat jealous of you or had animosity towards you as a person or? I wouldn't, I wouldn't say like animosity or jealousy for the most part. I mean, maybe a little bit from, but I don't think I ever really paid it attention to be honest. Um, Prison is, it's an easy place to get along for the most part. I mean, it's usually just guys hanging out, playing cards, playing dominoes, whatever they're doing, you know, hustling, whatever they're doing. For the most part, it's easy to get along. It's easy to navigate. Prison's not like a, it's not like a complex set of rules. It, it's, it's, if you want to read books all day and study all day, for the most part, nobody's going to say anything. And the biracial thing, so the biracial thing, uh, the only things that would ever really happen was I would get to, for example, if I got moved from a three yard to a two yard, when I got to the yard, Mexicans would come up to me like, what's up, homie, you Rasa? Are you fucking M.A.? Are you fucking... And like, no, I'm not. And they're like, oh, are you native? Like, no. <laughs> oh, are you a paisa? Yeah. No, I'm not. Oh, yeah. what are you? I'm black. They'd be like, oh, okay. And then they leave. You know what okay, I mean? Okay, okay. But by the time I had been in there for so long, I knew I know a lot of people. I'm a social person. I like to talk. I like to, you know, I'm social. I like to, I know a lot of people. So I could get to a yard and I'm going to know 10, 15 people as soon as I get there. I'm going to see my buddy I knew from this yard three years ago when he's going to pull up. What's up, Mike? How's it going? So, But being biracial, being you know light, for the most part, never had any issues with it. It was never like a, the brothers never looked down on me for okay. it. You know what I mean? The white boys can never say anything to me. Like what? It's, exactly. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, because I mean, we get a lot of youngsters and I tell them, I say, for one, man, don't go to prison. For number two, just be yourself. Yeah. If you're a stand-up dude, you're not, you know, you don't have no no grimy shit on your, your yep. jacket, you ain't in there for no weirdo shit, you'll be all right. You know yep. what I mean? Just conduct yourself, mind your business. Um, I know we talked before and it's like, you know, you said you spent a lot of time reading, educating yourself. Um, you know, tell them a little bit about what you did with your time, which kind of kept you out the way. So, um, around probably my first year in, my dad started sending me books, um, biographies, and I fell in love with reading. I fell in love with reading biographies and I started studying as much as I could. And I worked at the same time. Uh, this was early in my sentence. I was on, um, uh, I was in Buckeye and Steiner. It's a three yard in, uh, out west of Phoenix. Um, and Steiner has a pretty serious reputation. It's known as Stickham Steiner. For a three yard, it's, it's pretty much the highest three yard in the state, or it was back then. You know what I mean? This is 10, 11 years ago. There's other three yards that do have pretty crazy reputations. So I've heard since then. But, um, you know, being there when I'm young, I was, uh, I got to Steiner in 2010. I'd been in county for a year. Um, so, I was, yeah, I was 19 or 20. I'm a young kid, you know what I mean? And I'm, I'm 32 now, so I look, I look young now. Imagine how I looked 12 years mm -hmm. ago. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, looked, I was a little baby-faced kid and small guy. I'm not a big guy. And Steiner's a place that has – the name is literally Stick'em Steiner. That's, they call it that for a reason. So getting there, you know, you got to learn the rules. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, – uh, it's not complicated. Don't do drugs. Don't get in debt. I mean, if you can do that, if you can do those two things and don't talk crazy at the side of your neck. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. You're good. You're good. Yeah. Like if you can do those three things, it don't matter how long your sentence is. You'll yeah. be fine. Don't yeah. do drugs. Don't yeah. get in debt. And, and don't talk at the side of your neck. That's right. That's and you'll right. be fine. That's right. It's that simple. You know, when you're when you're a young kid and you're on a three yard, and you start seeing things happen to people for talking crazy at the side of their neck or getting in heroin debt. You know, getting in debt three hundred dollars and you don't got three hundred dollars. Your mom ain't sending you three hundred dollars. Your girlfriend ain't sending you three hundred dollars. Mm. You in debt now. You're getting you know now you're in the bathroom with some people you don't want to be in the bathroom with, and it ain't. <laughs> it's all bad. Yeah, it's all bad. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but. I saw that fast. I learned it fast. And I had some people in there who I'd met. Um, I had a friend of mine, a close friend of mine. He's a lifer. Um, his mom actually lived not, or his, no, his wife, I'm sorry. His wife lived not far from my mom. And uh, we were about an hour from where his wife and my mom lived. So they would carpool to come visit us and stuff. And he was a lifer, uh, older dude, probably like 50. Good dude, real nice guy. He showed me everything when I first got there. So listen, youngster, do this, don't do that, and you'll be fine. And I learned it. I figured it out. And then I decided I wanted to start doing other things. I wanted to, whether it was studying or um, reading or working out, you know, constantly working out. That's for the most part what 
kept me not getting in trouble. My mm -hmm. mom coming to visit me, uh, my dad coming to visit me, my daughter. I had a you know I had a one year old daughter when I went in, and um, that's what kept me going from day to day. And see, that's good to know because, like I said, a lot of people are scared to death going in. They don't really know. There's like no course on how to you know, really survive in prison outside of what we've been putting out for almost the last decade. So, um, you know, it's giving them people the insight of that and letting them know that, you know, if you handle your business and you just, you know, mind yourself, you can get in, do what you need to do and go home and be safe. Yeah. And that's the main thing. So, hey, man, you guys pay attention, take heed. Big Herc 916 getting down with Mike on Prison Talk.